Welcome into the Michigan Football Report. We are presented by BetQL. Folks, if you want to get an advantage over your sports book, if you want to make money sports gambling, BetQL is the best service. We'll talk about it later in the show. I started using it over the weekend. Went 5-2, and two, absolutely crushed it, made big-time cash. Go to chatsports.com slash MichiganQL. Use promo code chatmichigan at checkout for the subscription service. It's not free, folks, but make sure you save 25% using that promo or that URL and promo code chatmichigan. All right, coming up on today's show, there's a lot of things to talk about around this program and what we saw on Saturday and what we're expecting coming up this Saturday and beyond. Lots changed. Washington loses. We'll talk about that in a second. Wisconsin, that was seen as a for sure loss by many of you. They lost their home and op- home opener to Penn State. But we'll talk about the quarterback, Cade McNamara, J.J. McCarthy, and this offense with Josh Gaddis uh, and Jim Harbaugh and, and others. Next up, it is a mega recruiting weekend coming up. You have got all kinds of players. You've got your quarterback of your future, potentially. You know, a lot of schools coming after him. Dante Moore, he's going to be on campus. You've got a couple five stars in this 2022 class who many Michigan fans thought might be lean to the Wolverines. One's committed elsewhere, one not. We'll talk about this mega recruiting weekend. And then what the F did Washington do? I don't even know what the deal was. Like, this game was so hard to track. Like, none of the score app services would even tell you really what was going on. I could barely keep up, you know, follow along the plays and play by play. All of a sudden, I like refresh, boom, game over. They lose to Washington. So, we'll talk about this Washington Michigan matchup, which just takes on a completely new, uh, I think, approach. And frankly, it's not as exciting if, you know, they would just beat Montana 56 to 3. Been a more interesting game, probably, at least from a national perspective fan perspective heading into this one so here's the betting line Michigan was rumored or was kind of slated to be like a one point favorite two point favorite before the season started now they're a six and a half point favorite nearly a touchdown favorite and the over under in this one is 49 points that's actually pretty low but Montana you know uh, Washington score where they score like seven points in their loss to Montana their offense looked disastrous so don't expect this to be a high scoring affair we saw Michigan drop 47 of course but that was against Western Michigan Expect a little more uh, of, a, of a challenge from Washington's defense going into this one. But if you're betting this weekend, want to give these guys their uh, their due and their just due, tell you all about BetQL. Look, promos are, uh, you know, our, our sponsors help us keep the show rolling, production graphics, etc. So make sure you support them. And this is one that you should be supporting because it gives you an advantage over the sports books. BetQL is an amazing app for telling you tr- betting trends. They put five-star bets in every single week. There's a handful of five-star bets. I'm going to give you guys a little insight. You don't have to pay for this. Uh, Buffalo, five-star bet to cover the spread over Nebraska. So bet that one if you want. Uh, Virginia, five-star bet to be a, cover a 10-point spread over Illinois. Just kind of stick in the Big Ten. And then another Big Ten game, Miami, Ohio, a five-star bet to cover a 20. There's 20 point underdogs to Minnesota. Those are just some of the five-star bets. I followed their advice this weekend, went five and two. Toss up on the screen. If you follow me on Twitter, BetQL equals big winnings. Um, that first one, I really actually six and one with BetQL, uh, five and one with BetQL. That first one, I just made my, uh, my, my own. I didn't even follow their advice. All the rest of those ones, though, I was following their advice, focused on what they said were the trends and the five-star bets. And, uh, and I did well. So BetQL, go to chatsports.com slash MichiganQL. It's a $14.99 a month service for just one sport. If you want two sports, it's $20 a month. If you want college football and uh, the NFL with our promo code, you get 25% off your monthly subscription. If you use their service, folks, and you bet one, you make one bet and you win it, you're, you've already covered the subscription. It's an awesome app. Make sure you use our, our link, chatsports.com slash MichiganQL, and then hit that promo code when you make your subscription to 25% off. Chat Michigan, C-H-A-T-M-I-C-H-I-N-I-G-A-N, all one word, to get 25% off. All right, it's May's out on Saturday. This is what we hope it looks like. This is not a real photo. I saw someone put this on Twitter, so I grabbed it. May's out under the lights on Saturday. Michigan was repping 110,000 strong this past weekend against Western Michigan. I fully expect it to be 112, 113, 114,000 uh, in the stadium. Make it look like this. Don't be the guy who wears an old Michigan blue shirt or just doesn't represent because it happens every year. You go to a Maze Out game and he's got people to your left, people to your right, wearing like a, a red starter jacket from the 90s for like their high school. Just wear Maze. If you don't have one, go to Walmart and get a $12 just yellow shirt if you have to. Whatever. Don't show up to the game if you're not wearing Maze. I'm going to find you if you do. Maze Out the lights if you're going to be attending make it look like that make penn state be jealous of michigan and you saw my rant last week wi-fi what's up michigan what's up we doing wi-fi or not okay 
what do we need to do to get this in there? Because a lot of people had fun on Twitter. I said, you can go to a hostel in Afghanistan. I looked into it. Actually, a fact, still can't get Wi-Fi in Michigan Stadium, but you can in Afghanistan at any of these hostels that are, I don't know, whatever. It's a war-torn country at this point. Not going to make jokes of it, but it's pretty spectacularly uh, amazing that it's 2021 and there's no Wi-Fi at Michigan Stadium. So I'm going to keep putting the pressure on. If you guys do, call the athletic department. Call whoever you can call at the school and demand Wi-Fi because cell signal doesn't work there. Without Wi-Fi, you are in the dark zone for four hours if you're attending a game. First story, though, on today's show, outside of all that, is Cade McNamara is your number one rated quarterback in college football after one week, at least according to Pro Football Focus's college analysis. They kind of take all these different uh, things in consideration, but they put this out, tossed up on screen there, and basically said they put it out on Sunday and said, here are the top rated quarterbacks. Uh, I don't really, you know, don't really go into their uh, their format, their ranking, but Adrian Martinez in Nebraska is kind of number two. I'm not sure if that uh, if that really helps our point. You're not seeing the big names on there like uh, like you know, quarterbacks from Ohio State and Alabama and Oklahoma. So don't take this for everything. But at least Michigan's quarterback play is getting praised nationally. Usually it's the other way around. People are making fun of it. Take a look at these numbers though. Nine of eleven for Cade McNamara, 136 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, those only. Two incompletions were uh, were on tip balls, if what I remember. I think I said on Saturday he only threw one. He didn't throw any passes in the second half. Did throw one pass in the second half. Um, 130, so it was like a six-yarder. So I think he went eight of ten, I believe, and 130 in the first half. One of one and uh, and a six-yard gain to a tight end in the second half. Two touchdowns. And Cade McNamara was a big part of the talk. But how about that throw by J.J. McCarthy? Look, I don't think I appreciated it in real time. I went back, I was like, wow, it was a great throw. But I went back and watched it. If you know what I'm talking about, if you watch the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He threw that ball from like one sideline with two guys in his face outside of the pocket in stride to Dalen Baldwin on the opposite hash. It must have gone 55, 60 yards in the air right on the right in the money. I mean, right in the money. It was such a good throw. That was just an amazing throw. The more I look back at it, it's one of the top five throws or so I've seen from a Michigan quarterback in the last 20 years. Now, it wasn't like, you know, at the buzzer, Chad Henney to Mario Manningham or anything like that, but a hell of an arm, and I think it just got everybody excited. Like, wow, you, that little reminded me of Drew Henson. That was amazing. That was just an athletic play that you didn't expect anybody. So I'm interested to see more of J.J. McCarthy. I don't want it to be an expensive Cade McNamara, at least this week. We'll see how it goes, but what a, uh, you know, just a – a nice, exciting throw to get everybody excited out of the gate for his first game as a true freshman. But predict it for me. I'm going to go. My number is going to be 210. Predict the exact number down below in the comments of passing yards for Cade McNamara this week against Washington under the lights. We saw some great running attack, right? Ronnie Bell's out, so maybe it's less than we expect. I'm going to go 210. Go down in the comments and let me know who, you, how many yards you think Cade McNamara will have passing this week. Next up. Huge recruiting weekend. Huge recruiting weekend. This is number two of four stories on the day. I've highlighted five visitors that you need to know about. You really need to know about because these are the biggest names. If you haven't seen it already, pull it up on screen. There's like 30, 40 guys visiting this weekend in some capacity. I'm going to kind of go down and read a few of them off. Uh, but these are the guys I'm focusing on. Walter Nolan released a, a top three a few weeks back, Texas A&M. Uh, Georgia, Tennessee. He moved to Knoxville. I think the trends are going, hey, he's going to go to Tennessee. But he's still coming to Michigan. Originally, it said, maybe I'll come for the Ohio State game. So did Domani Jackson, I believe, said it's the Ohio State game, end of the year. They're moving it up. And I think with Will Johnson being there, Deion Walker, another four-star uh, defensive lineman out of Cass Tech, and then Dante Moore next year, he's a junior in high school, uh, next year's big-time quarterback, at least in the Midwest. Ohio State's going to come after him heavy with Queen Ewers you know, enrolling a year earlier. They'll have a little more space between the two of those guys, a two-year gap. If Michigan wins this game, right, this is a massive weekend for recruiting. If Michigan wins this game, all kinds of things can change. Momentum is just as long as they play good, right? If they win like 17 to 13, they look terrible all game, different story. If they win like 35 to 14, 35 to 10 and just dominate, offense looks good, defense looks good, crowds looking good, what a difference that can make for this recruiting class. That's lost a little bit of momentum over the last month or so. Um, some more names here I want to just go over. Uh, Josh Connerly, offensive lineman. You've got obviously Domani Jackson, Will Johnson, Kenneth Grant, a defensive lineman, Lander Barton, a linebacker, all making official visits. Some other folks, Michigan commitments, Tyler Morris, uh, the wide receiver out of Chicago, Connor Jones, the offensive lineman out of Colorado. He'll be there. Uh, I said Deion Walker said there. Aaron Alexander, an underrated linebacker that's really fast that uh, Michigan got a commitment for. Cody Jones, Miles Powell also um, commits. The 2023 class, you've got about 
a dozen or so um, visitors led by Dante Moore. And then how about this? CJ Carr, Lloyd's grandson, 2024. Big time recruit at this point. Top 200 player, I would guess. Maybe even higher than that. He'll be uh, visiting. So that could be your two next quarterbacks between Dante Moore, CJ Carr. And then Walter Nolan's bringing the whole fam, folks, right? His younger brother, offensive lineman Warren, 2025 kid. So was he in eighth grade? Uh, and then 2027 is Waylon Nolan, who they're just listing as an athlete, visiting with him. But, you know, I guess they're prospects. Uh, they're going to other schools. So nevertheless, uh, those are the prospects, the recruits to keep an eye out for. I believe truly that if Michigan shows out, has an amazing game, wins, wins going away, and does everything that you'd expect for a Michigan program to do against a Washington team that just lost to Montana, I think this is an opportunity to get Domani Jackson to flip to get Walter Nolan to reconsider Michigan, to land a couple other guys which are on the fence, make it you know loud, wear maze, make this an awesome weekend if you were there in the fan in the stands. Uh, yell at the fan the players' names when they go by, and make sure you guys get going with BetQL. Another little deal I want to make sure you guys knew about. So we told you about ChatSports.com/slash/BetQL, but take a look at this deal they've got going on because if you want to bet on games, this is an amazing deal. They've got a promotion with M with uh, MGM Sportsbook. So if you are in the state of Michigan, you can go to chatsports.com slash Michigan MGM. When you do that, you'll land on the page to sign up with uh, their uh, partnership with the BetMGM app. You're going to see Jamie Foxx's face on there. You make a deposit of $10 and you make your first bet. You will get a free year service, a $15 service just for college football, $20 a month if you want, uh, monthly if you want college football and NFL. You get a free year service. If you do this, if you get going with BetMGM. So if you want to make a single bet this year, chatsports.com slash MichiganMGM. You get the BetQL app for free for a year. Folks, it's such a good deal. We'll put it down in the comments. We'll put it in the description as well. This link and the one from before. So make sure you get going with BetQL. Trust me, I'm using it every single weekend, every time I make a bet. Number three, halfway through the show, but we're going to go a little faster through this next part. Washington lost, Michigan, Washington lost to Montana. What the fuck? What is going on here? Jack over here, he's like, what kind of, what kind of, my producer is like, what kind of uh, JV team you bring into Michigan this weekend? They lost to Montana and FCS school, but like the stats in this game were, were absurd. I mean, it's not like Montana did anything. Washington just has no offense. Their offensive line is terrible. Like this is a game uh, of, of just somebody had to win it. Both teams played terrible and it kind of makes this weekend a little bit tougher. So go down in the comments, though. I just want you Washington fans are already starting to hit the uh, the comments, talking about this game in, on this show. They were in our post-game comments a couple days ago before they lost. Um, type WTF Washington. What the F Washington. Make sure they know that they are, uh, their team ruining this game by losing to Montana, or at least ruining the national spotlight on it, is not acceptable. But here is the matchup here. Michigan Stadium. Under the lights, it's about the 12th or so under the lights game. I'm going to uh, cover that tomorrow, maybe Thursday, just going over the under the lights game that Michigan has had over the last decade or so. It was right around this time, 10 years ago, 2011, Michigan had their first under the lights game. Michigan, six and a half point favorite. BetQL has no insight in this game. They're giving like a one star, two star. They don't really have a, a, a take yet on who's going to cover this or over under. But 49 point spread, six and a half point favorite. For Michigan, I want you guys to predict the score down in the comments. Go down and predict the score for me. Let me know what you think about this one. Let me know if you guys think that uh, Michigan is going to get the job done. Predict the score down in the comments. I want to give a couple people shout outs actually. Uh, stay on this for a second, producer Jack. There were two people last week that came really close. Uh, Joseph Yatumo, longtime viewer, you got like 47 to. I don't know, uh, 17 or 10 or something like that. And then Jose Santiago, also a longtime viewer, uh, got close, very close, those two. Those are the closest two guesses last week. Keep watching. I think on Thursday or Wednesday, we'll do another $25 predict the score offer. But go down, let me know your score predictions down in the comments. Last but not least, everything went good for Michigan in a lot of ways outside of the first maybe a couple of possessions on defense. I think the defensive line, going back and watching some tape, seeing what Jim Harbaugh had to say, I think the defensive line is still the biggest question. They only had two guys who had their hands in the dirt. They were playing a lot of like this UFO defense, if you remember the Cleveland Browns in the early 2000s, where you had like six or seven guys up at the line, and you didn't know who was coming in, who was dropping back, except Mozzie Smith, Chris Hitton usually had their hand down the entire time. Um, Aiden Hutchinson was standing up the majority of the time. Other guys, you saw Mike Morris, you saw some other players that hadn't got a lot of playing time in the past. We'll see what happens this week. This is not Western Michigan. This is Washington. This defensive line needs to get pressure, and they need to continue to clog holes, not get pushed around. We'll see what they do. 
because after this one, maybe it's a couple in Northern Illinois, Rutgers, and then you've got a couple weeks until Washington or Wisconsin is the next big test for this one. All right, stick with us. We're gonna come back in the next few days. We've got a preview coming, I think, tomorrow or the next day. A mailbag we put out a call for for you guys, and we're getting some Michigan football rumors diving into the offensive, defensive game plan after we've talked to a few folks around the program. Uh, if you haven't that, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Until our next video, let's go blue.